Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Now I can start laying it out here on my piece of wood. I could use a template, but I think in this case I'll be just as well off with a piece of wood with the lines drawn on it. Okay, that's the last time I use the yardstick because the rest of it can be done with a square. Put the center line of the holes on this one one inch back from the front edge and this is three and a half inches wide. I don't think I need to be that far out. I think that's actually going to work pretty well. That should let them fold up quite nicely. Now all these handles fit really well into these holes, which are one inch diameter. So these new ones are also going to be drilled at one inch diameter. Since I have these nice drill bits right here, load up. Since these pilot screws are typically 16 threads per inch, once I touch with the spurs, I know every rotation is going to take me down an extra 16th of an inch. Since this is right around 3 quarters of an inch, if I go down 8 sixteenths, that takes me to a half inch. That should put the pilot right out the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there it is. Just a handy trick to keep you from blowing out the back side. You want to check the threads on your, your bits, but most of them are uh, 16 threads per inch. Now the ones that look like they have real fine threads, it's really kind of a fooler because if you look at it, it's actually a twin lead thread. And a twin lead thread has twice as many threads in there, but they really are only traveling a sixteenth of an inch per revolution.
the idea of having the braces right there. It makes this job a lot easier. So putting them over here on the, the wall is the right idea. I don't need the full width of this board. So I'm going to mark it so that I can rip it down to width. I also want to put a mark on there for the length that I want to cut it to. When I strike with a marking gauge, I like to do the first pass fairly lightly. It doesn't grab a hold of the grain and run out as, ba as badly if I do that. If I try and pull it through the first time all the way down full depth, it tends to wander and, and try and follow the grain and it'll actually knock it out of position. And I can end up with a line that's too close to the edge that I want. And if I'm trying to cut this piece to save both pieces of wood, Having a gouge across the top of this really didn't help things. Now I haven't been doing a knife wall on the other cuts that I made, but we're actually going to try and make something the right way this time. I was Building prototypes and rushing. Always a bad idea. First cut with a knife is just a nice little scoring line and then the next cut goes a little deeper. And you can take it down as far as you think is necessary. This is a 10 tooth cross cut. It's a number 12. Very, very nice saw. Actually the best one in my whole batch of saw. Does a real nice job, even on this soft pine with very little tear out on the backside. And I wasn't trying, I wasn't even being careful. The slots that were cut here are three quarters of an inch wide. That gives me more than enough room for the frame of the brace to go through. And still gives me a little capture edge there. So that the knob doesn't slip through. Three quarter, three quarter, three quarter, and three quarter. Measure twice, cut once.
because I have these holes in descending order, that way this brace will fold over the top of that one and this one will fold over the top of that one and so on. With these in descending order, I can cut this front edge at an angle so that I won't end up with a, a long unsupported piece here. That'll make it a little bit stronger. Also, I think it'll add a little decorative touch to it. Never hurts to make your stuff look nice. Make it so that it's easier to cut. I want to start on a as close to a 90 degree edge as I can. So I want to have this edge hanging out just like this. The number 12 is a really good saw, but it's a cross cut. This is a Distin D8 thumb hole rip saw. Does much better on rip. done with a table saw, but I don't think it would have been any better. That's pretty close to dead. One and three eighths. One and three eighths on both ends. By the time I went out in the garage, set up the radial arm saw, made this cut, I'd already have it on the wall. This is where I make most of my mistakes, is not paying attention to which direction I'm going on this and how I want to do it. A little bit of time spent now, 
saves a whole lot of time later making a new one. Nice having the bench pulled out away from the wall. I can do all four sides. This is a Keystone Defender. It's considered a, a second tier saw, but this little guy, even though it looks like a toy, 10 points per inch, does a really good job on small cuts. Now, I have a back saw, but I'm having a little trouble with the back saw. I think I've got to take some of the set out of it. It came to me sharp, and I think the guy put too much set in the back saw. So I've got to detune it a bit. This little guy just goes right through that stuff, smooth and easy. When I first clamped it down, I thought I was going to have to move the clamp before I can cut this in. But that little saw works so nicely, I didn't have to. This may just look like uh, vanity on my part, trying to make it look nice. But when you break the edges on a piece of wood, they actually strengthen the corners. Because if you get rid of that weak, little thin edge there, it doesn't get a chance to hook onto something, catch, tear, and splinter. a good idea to take the time to knock the corners off. As a tool maker we did it because nobody wants to get their fingers cut and the guy who was going to work on that die after you got done with it probably would appreciate it if you didn't put him in a position where he got cut. And if you didn't do what you were supposed to do and break the edges, people knew about it. And you developed a reputation as being a slacker. Which is never a good thing to have, because then people stop taking care of your stuff too. We're running a little long here, so I'm going to stop. We'll come back tomorrow, same time, same channel. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments below. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching.